Today, I'll be sharing my experience with a silly and charming free indie game called Chimera Destroy All Monster Girls. Is it worth your time? Well, let's find out in this review. Are you ready? Now, that's gaming. Hey, welcome back to the channel. My name is Nakutso. Is this your first time here? If so, this channel is all about discovering something new and sharing some of the very best indie games. If any of that interests you, well, then consider joining the community by subscribing. Morgana Island is home to monsters who live peaceful lives in Regaza Town, but everything is thrown into chaos as the sea spiders seek out the small fortune in town that's accumulated. This is where a chimera named Chelsea is brought to life to help bring back the stolen loot from these pirates. There's a lot of humor in the game and it doesn't really take it so like super seriously or anything like that. A lot of the characters that you do meet have their own quirks and it definitely adds to the overall flavor when you're watching and reading a lot of the dialogue in this game. One of my favorite characters in the game is Estelia. She's a Gorgon. Uh, it's, it's actually the checkpoint person that you pass through. And during these different passings, you can talk to her for different conversations. And she says like the funniest things. And the interaction with Chosia and her is just something that I really enjoyed. And I really wish there was like more of that in the game. Not to say that the other characters don't have as much of a personality. It's just I feel like that character definitely stood out the most to me. Uh, a lot of the bosses you actually interact with in and out of the actual stage. And it's definitely something that I really enjoyed and was one of the highlights while playing through this game. Level design and gameplay. So how did the levels fail throughout the game? What gave me trouble and how difficult was the progression overall? When I was playing through the game, I didn't have like too many issues just like playing through the level, like having something really difficult. I definitely feel that the game was more on the easier side and it's something I wish that could have been harder. I definitely like the stages later on, like halfway throughout the game and a lot of these extra stages that you unlock throughout the game definitely feel a lot better in terms of the design and just how the progression of the difficulty was. But for, I would say the most part, it's pretty easy unless you're trying to speed run then it can kind of get complicated but you know if you're just playing through this casually it's something that you won't have a lot of trouble with so that can be good or bad depending on your you know play style and if you like something more challenging but I definitely think this game is still pretty fun to play despite it not being too difficult. Each of the levels do have their own type of vibe, their own theme. So when you play through the levels, they are actually pretty interesting. Uh, they have their own types of enemies. Some of the enemies are repeated throughout the stages. So it's like nothing like too major. Some of the enemies are harder to kill. They have different attacks, but I really wish there were like a few more different enemy types, maybe some more powerful enemies throughout the game. You do have like mini bosses, uh, kind of like this gauntlet where it takes a little bit more effort to kill them and sometimes you get the collectibles of the game which are like notebooks that really kind of you know gives you something that you want to work for when you play through the game when it came to the controls everything felt pretty good using the abilities using the you know basic momentum uh, there's nothing like too stiff about the game everything felt pretty good I played with a controller and also played a little with the keyboard of course the controller felt a lot more natural when playing a platforming game so uh, I'm more used to that but the keyboard still felt fine when I was playing through the game um, definitely a lot of the powers that you gain throughout the game some are much more useful than others especially the treasure chest that ability is probably really overpowered and is what also contributes to making the game easy since when you smash down with this ability you're pretty much invincible against most attacks unless you like land on spikes or some bosses have attacks that can actually go through that but for the most part uh i wish that was definitely tuned down <laughs> tuned <laughs> I wish that was, oh my gosh. 
I wish I was toned down more since using that ability, you don't have to use it and you can actually disable some of these abilities in the menu to make the game harder. But you know, when you have something like that, you kind of abuse it. So I definitely wish that some of the powers gave me more incentive to use it. Um, just the basic attacks, the strong attack, the fast attack, you can get through a level much faster with the Harpy boost, which is probably the second most uh, used power besides the treasure chest that I used. Something like the Mermaid Anchor, which you get from one of the bosses is, uh, I think I only used it like a couple times. And one time was just to get a collectible, which you could have gotten anyway with the Harpy boost. The sound design. So how are the sound effects, the music, everything coming into the game? Does it help or does it really hinder when playing through Chimera? I would say that the sound effects are pretty basic, though they do give sounds to most of the things that you have in the game, which you have different attacks. You definitely feel the weight and the impact of the treasure chest when you smash an enemy. Um, some attacks are okay, like the Harpy Boost and the Saucy Shot. A lot of these attacks have some good weight behind them. Some of the sounds are kind of light and don't really have an impact though when you hit them. I would definitely say that a lot of the attacks repeat in some way or another. Some of the pirates and other attacks by the bosses you hear time and time again. And some sounds are similar to Choshia that she played throughout. When it came to just like recognizing different attacks, I know that some games don't have any sounds at all and it makes it difficult. But playing through this, you know when there are things you have to dodge by there being sound cues from the different bosses that you play through or some enemies have some attacks that they let out. So it was definitely easy to you know, know what's coming towards you to dodge. When it comes to the music, there was some music that was hit or miss. I would say that there was some repetition between the connecting stages of the EX stages. So the extra stages and the main stages, they play the same theme. All of all of these stages, there were really only two that stood out to me. One was Pumpkin Valley, where it had a, you know, kind of a classic haunted house type of vibe. And the final boss, which gave you that epic vibe that, yeah, this is it. This is the final boss. I really love that. And I actually added that to my playlist. So that's something that I actually listen to on a consistent basis. It all boils down to a few things. Considering this is a free game with other modes added such as harvest mode which adds just more characters to the game and some other extra stuff that you can collect and berserk mode which you can go through and especially if you're a speed runner you will definitely enjoy that i would say that this free game has like much more content than other games that i played that I had to pay for and it was definitely nice seeing that the developers still updates this game and they recently added more to this game, fixing the stages, fixing some bugs. So I would definitely say check out this game by Suits and Sandals. They did a fantastic job and I desperately want a sequel to this game to be bigger, have more stuff all around. If you're looking for a platforming game, you'll find a lot to go into when you play this game. Uh, expect probably six to seven hours in total. If I still didn't convince you and you want to see more of this game, I made a whole series from secrets to explaining the story, which you can find in the playlist here, or you can check out some other reviews by clicking this card. As always, everyone, keep discovering something new, and I'll catch you next time.